Hey everybody, I want to say thank you so much for coming this morning. I know a lot of you have other things you could have been doing. I love the guys who are wearing shirts. I love it, me too. See, I'm copying you. I love it. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because this is the way that politicking should be. We should be in an arena, in a world where the people who are saying, I want to be your representative, you can actually reach out to, touch, talk to, and actually answer questions. You're finding right now, if you look at the current Democrat Party, and the current Republican Party, they're not doing that. They're basically just saying, the other guy is evil. And that's it. And they have no answer for you. They have nothing. What's happening now is you look at Governor Cuomo as he's running, what is his entire policy? His entire policy is Trump is evil. That's the entire campaign. Now, whether you personally think Trump is evil or not, I don't really care, it's up to you. But my issue here is, how does that help any New Yorker? How does that get any New Yorker to have a better job, a better opportunity, better chance to their family? How does it bring somebody back from North Carolina who's left? How does it make your life better in any way, shape, or form? It doesn't. It just makes you feel righteous when you cast your vote. But the red team's no better, right? The red team right now, what's their entire campaign? Cuomo's evil. Cuomo's corrupt. We know he's corrupt. <laughs> we kind of knew that already. That's not new news for us. We knew this already. And again, Cuomo being corrupt, how does that help you? How does that help any New Yorker have a better life, reunite their family from Tennessee or from Florida? How does it make anybody come back? How does it make your, your friend or your family member who, gra who graduated from college here and then packed up and left and never came back. How does it make that person come back? It doesn't. That's what I'm talking about. I'm trying to give you actual answers. The goal here is that you're not voting out of fear anymore. You're not voting for the lesser of two evils. You're actually voting for someone. And we haven't been doing that for years. The last 16 years, you know what's been happening? Here's what's been happening. Red team comes in second, blue team comes in first, and nothing changes. That's been happening for 16 years. Red team comes in second, nothing changes. Guys, can I get you to mind the camera behind you if you don't mind? That's all, you don't mind. Because people are watching and they're gonna be upset if you're, if you're in the way. So, it's important to make that change. That's one reason why I'm doing this. People say all the time, Larry, why are you doing this? Why in the world would you be out here in every town, in all these cities, when you could be doing something else? I could be doing something else. But I'm doing this, why? It's actually selfish. I don't want to move. That's the truth. I don't want to move. How many people in this room right now know somebody who's left New York State? Yep, there we go. How many of you have considered leaving New York State? Yep, there we go. That's every, if you watch my live streams, you see I do this in every single event and every single time, at least 75% of the room puts their hands in the air for both questions. Every time, no matter what town, no matter what city, no matter where I am, no matter what time of day, that should be an embarrassment for our governor, and it's not. I'm a business guy. If my customers hate me and they're leaving, and I'm losing 100,000 customers every single year for eight years straight, I'm a really crappy CEO. My goal is to make happy people, happy New Yorkers, so they wanna stay. Every thing, single thing I talk about is a way to do something crazy. I talk about what our actually founding documents talk about, the pursuit of happiness. I talk about it all the time. Who else talks about that? No one. It's about punishing people and harsher rules and more penalties. I talk about you being happy. You might go, well, Larry, that's kind of silly. No, it's not. Well, it's subjective. It is, which is why you have to pursue happiness in your way. I don't know what makes you happy. You probably don't know what makes you happy. But again, it's the pursuit of happiness. So go out there and try. If that's a new business, if that's a new relationship, if that's a new job, if that's education, whatever, if that's a farm, if that's moving to a big city, whatever you think is gonna make you happy is what we should be focusing on in this state. Why? Because if we have happy New Yorkers, we have happy families, we have happy business owners, we have happy employees, we have happy workers, which means we have happy kids and happy husbands and wives and sisters and brothers and cousins and spouses, and that means people will stay in New York, you'll, stay, you'll keep your family in New York, You'll bring your family back to New York. You'll open your business in New York. And one of the biggest things that's hurting us, when you retire, you'll keep your pension in New York. And we're not doing that. Happy New Yorkers means all of that stays in this state and this state grows and we're all good. I'm focused 
on Happy New Yorkers. Everything I talk about is about that, and no one else talks about that. Ask your Democrat or Republican who's running for governor, ask them to talk about happiness, and they'll talk about law, and they'll talk about theory. I'll give you actual answers. The one thing you've seen me do always is answer every single question. Next thing you've never seen me have, in a year I've been doing this, year I've been doing this, you've never seen me with notes. Not once. You've also never seen me have rules. Not once. What does that mean? Well, Larry, that's great that you'll do that, but what happens when you win? Well, when I win, guess what I don't have? Massive party infrastructure. Guess what I don't have? A bunch of party bosses that can begin to move everything. I don't have that. You know what I have? You. That's what I have. You. I can't stop this. I've been doing this for a year and I'll keep doing it for four more when I win. Literally. So do I need a mic? Do you guys, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, we're good. Yep. So, um, see, he's good. Love that, yeah. So the issue here is remembering, I still need you. So literally, when I win this thing, I'm gonna get a bus. Maybe I'll sell one of those cool Cuomo choppers, helicopters, get rid of one of those. And I'll actually, yes, he has many of them. So yeah, so maybe I'll get a bus, and I'll get a bus, and I'll have my, my, my awesome lieutenant governor, who is Andrew Hollister, who is a tech guy, and we'll, we'll deck it out so that we can actually run the government through the bus. Well, how are we gonna pay for it? We'll sell one of those helicopters. Yes, we'll sell one of those helicopters, and we'll have a real cool bus that'll be decked out, no taxpayer money, already paid for, and guess what? I can run the government from any city in New York State. I can actually still be here, meet people, shake hands, talk to people, know what's bothering you, figure out how to help you guys out. That's what I can do. I don't want to be the governor that you have now, which is, I won, elections have consequences, I'm now going to enforce my will upon you because I won. And be afraid, because if, if someone else wins, they'll enforce their will upon you. So vote for me because of fear. I want to be the governor who instead decides, I want to actually support your rights and defend your rights against the local bullies that constantly pop up. And many of you have had local bullies push you. Local bullies try to stop you. Local bullies doing the wrong thing to hurt you and affect your rights in some way, shape, or form. You had it. County level, city level, you all had it. And why do they not get punished? Why does your FOIA request get ignored? Why did when you call, no one cares? Because those local bullies are party infrastructure. They are enforcing the king's will. That's what they're doing. That will not be my will. Because people tease me all the time. Larry, you're from Queens. How can you know what's right for Syracuse or Liverpool or Watertown or Rochester or Jamestown? I don't. I don't. I don't know what's right for you. I don't. I don't plan to. I never will. But guess what? You don't know what's right for me in Queens either. Or even. How about I let you be you, you let me be me, you let her be her, him be him, and we'll all be free together. We can do that. It is absolutely possible, which is why this race is so important. I will go one step further and say, this is the most important individual race in the entire nation. Yes, I'm saying that. The most important individual race in the entire nation. Now, as a group, there are other things that are important as a, as a group. But I mean as a single election, there is not one more important. Why? What happens when I win this thing? The entire nation changes overnight. And I'm not joking. You know what I'm talking about. The two-party system of the establishment is broken overnight. All of a sudden, you will find several things happen. Number one, you will find people who are third party, people who are libertarian, people who are independent, people who are anything will all of a sudden say, wow, I can win. I don't have to fall in line with the current king of one of the parties. I don't have to do that. I can actually have my own way of thinking, my own way of doing things, and I have a shot at actually winning. Oh my God. You will find better politics, period. You will find better people running. You will find more people interested. You will find grassroots people actually running. You will find that happen overnight. But not just that. What, what, if, what if what happened to Democrats and Republicans? They can't just point the finger at each other and go, you know, I killed one person, but he killed three. So vote for me. That's how it is now. I saw a commercial the other day, and the commercial was almost, almost this. This guy is a bad guy. This guy is terrible. He's corrupt. This guy is horrible. This guy is the worst ever. And 
You guys see that commercial? Yes. It didn't say, here's the answer, or look for this guy. It just said, wow, this guy's terrible. This guy is horrible. That was the entire campaign. That tells you where we are now. There were no answers. It was fear, 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 fear. I win this thing, that goes away. Why does it go away? Because when it's just me and him, and that's all it is, he's evil, you're afraid, you vote for me, or worse, you give up. And that's what's been happening in New York State. 70% of New Yorkers don't vote. They give up. I know people who have been around this state for decades and have never voted. Constantly get people who come to these events who vote. People who don't vote will start voting. And when, they, when right now, if there's three of us running, and I go, he's evil, he goes, he's evil, he gets the vote. The good guy actually gets the vote because we're both evil. You will see everything change when I win. What if I'm wrong, I can't, when I come in second? No worries. You know what happens? I get a microphone in my face every single day saying, Larry, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? What do I start doing? I actually talk to people. I showed up. I didn't rely on my R or my D or my party bosses. I actually showed up. But not just that. I talked about the Second Amendment. I talked about lower taxes. I talked about small business. I talked about fixing schools. I talked about fixing family court. I talked about helping people out. And people said, oh, I like that. And they voted for me. We will have better Democrats and better Republicans if I just come in second, because they will have to actually do what they're supposed to do. Democrats are supposed to be about civil liberties. They're not. If I all of a sudden hear going, why aren't you, they'll have to be. If you're saying, why aren't you, they'll have to be. Republicans are supposed to be about smaller government and supporting small business. They're not. But when I come in second, they'll have to be. You'll tell them, I'll tell them, they'll move. You, everything gets better. This campaign is about real change. If you vote the same old ways, red or blue, here's what I promise you, blue comes in first, red comes in second. This is a statewide election, by the way, not local. Locally, Republicans, Democrats win all the time. I'm talking statewide. Blue comes in first, red comes in second, no change. This is the change. I wanna make it to where we are no longer voting for the lesser of two evils, and we are instead voting for someone who actually we want to vote for. When you ask me questions, some of you have seen it before, I will sometimes say things you don't like, some things you don't agree with. I'm okay with that. One thing I hope you'll understand, I'll never dodge a question, and I'll tell you what I feel even if you don't like it. My hope is that I get you at 80% of the time. I want 80%, 100% is impossible, I get it, but 80%. I use 80% for two reasons. One, business guy, the 80-20 rule, right? So you know about that 80-20 rule. Second, Reagan was my first um, was my was my uh, first commander in chief. And Reagan always said, if someone believes in you or agrees with you 80% of the time, that person is your ally, not your enemy. So I say 80%. If we connect 80%, you should consider voting for me. If we don't, you should vote for someone else or stay home. Please don't stay home. Too many of us stay home. I think I'm done for now. I could probably sit and talk for four more hours, but I won't. What I'll do instead is I'll do what I hope you guys want, is I'll take some questions and comments. And to be forward, here are my rules on questions and comments. No rules. You can say whatever you want, any way you want, in any way, shape, or form. Please, if you're, doing, if you're gonna insult, only insult me, no one else here, please. It's my only rule, right, if I have any. Please don't insult anybody else, just insult me if you want to. Any question, any comment, please go ahead. Go ahead. Is there any way to get the lotto back to schools? Ah, uh, great question. Remember, some of you may remember, there was an issue where the lottery was supposed to be supporting schools. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, like the tolls were gonna end once you pay for the bridge. <laughs> remember that story? Yeah, that was the story I told you? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it isn't, and I'm okay with that. Um, I think that uh, the, the lottery goes to a general fund, which I'm okay with. I don't need that, because the problem is, if you start doing that, it. Now you're deciding how much money goes to the school based upon the lottery. Not the right answer, right? And not just that, you're now incentivizing people to gamble. I don't want to incentivize people. I don't want you not to gamble. Your money, if you want to gamble, please gamble. Your money. I don't want to incentivize you to gamble either. I want you to gamble because you want to gamble. Your money, do what you want. That makes you happy, you like doing it, go ahead. So no, I'm, I'm, it, no, we won't and I'm okay with it. There are better ways to fund schooling 
that we can do it anyway. The Constitution makes us fund it anyway. So it isn't really a concern. Did I answer your question? Awesome. I know you see, he didn't like it, but I answered it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Go ahead, please. Well, I was kind of expanding on his question. It's like, couldn't we have that B for schools plus other methods? In theory, right. but what happens is what always happens. If mm -hmm. we if we earmark something for X, then come and the day something goes yes, but it's a crisis or it's an emergency or whatever thing they make up, and then they change it. If we simply say we're going to fund schools a different way, it becomes relevant. But not just that. Now we also have a, a reason to say, well, if lottery or gambling is for schools, right, or for whatever we decide to make it, then all of a sudden government has the right to control gambling. I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay that only the government can have a vice, right? If it's a vice, it's a vice. If it's not a vice, it's not a vice. Either way, government should be the only people to do it, right? So does it mean only government can, I don't know, uh, kidnap people? <laughs> Kinda, yeah. But anyway, yes. So I don't want to make these vices to be only government. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Good. Go ahead. What are your ideas on the taxes in the state and how do you plan to reform them and change them for the better of the New York State? That is a massive question and I will answer it in many different ways. Okay. Taxation in this state is a disaster. You, and most of you know that. This is a disaster. But it's not just taxes, it's also fees and fines and all types of things, right? The, I'll give you the core and then I'll give you a bunch of things around it. The core problem with taxes is the number one, the, the root problem is what's called unfunded mandates. Some of you know what this is, some of you don't. Unfunded mandates means Albany and or DC decide that you must pay for certain things and you don't have a choice. You just must, just pay for these things. And you go, but I don't want to. I didn't ask if you wanted to, you must. And you have counties now that are literally one third on Medicaid, one third on Medicare, with a dwindling population and mandates that don't stop. So now all of a sudden, now you have issues to where sometimes the mandate for a local area, community, or um, a local municipality is 85 or 95% of their budget. So the budget is $2 million and they're fighting over 20,000. Well, what happens when you have roads to fix and bridges to repair and school problems? How do you deal with that? One of three things. One, you beg Albany for money, which is very common. Grants and begging, and His Majesty loves that. His Majesty loves when you come to him on one knee and beg for his largesse. Hunger Games. Hunger Games, that's correct. His Majesty loves when you fight, 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 right? And he does this. You get it. Ah, you don't. He loves that. He set the system up for that, right? But here's what you don't get. Oh, sorry, but he doesn't get. It's not his money. It's our money. So when his largesse is our money that he believes is owed to him, he believes that. So then he gives it out. That's option one. I hate that option, but that is option one. Option two, you raise property taxes. And the reason why you do that is, you guys may or may not realize this, that's one of the only taxes you don't actually vote on. Your legislators vote on it without you. And that we can change the simple line item change to the law. So we make it that all property taxes must be voted on by you in November. That's it. You do that, massive change in property tax. Right, because here's how it actually works right now. Oh my God, we don't have money. We're broken. Unfunded minutes are destroying us. What can we do? We can go in a back room and raise property taxes. That'll get us a bunch of money. Yeah, but we can't raise it past 2% because of the property tax cap, which they always talk about. But there's a loophole, crisis. That's the loophole. So let me ask you, are we in crisis now? Oh yeah. Yes, we are. Always. No doubt, we are so in crisis. <laughs> so what does that mean? Now we raise property tax, nine, 10. Someone told me once it was raised 17%. Yeah. Is that true? There we go, 17% was raised, yes. Would you vote for that in November? Thank you. All those property tax raises go away just by making that change. Does that make sense? So that's number one, make that change. So get rid of the pressure for them to do it and then don't let them do it with a simple vote. That will that will right away put a cap by default on property tax. Also I don't, says who's asking for it then. I'm so sorry? Makes who's asking for it accountable. That's correct, yes. And now you, as as your people, you gotta come out and go, yes, please raise my property tax 17%. Uh, sure. If you guys actually do that, you deserve it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. If you actually do that, you deserve it. That's all I'm saying, right? So my point being, make that change that will happen. But now the third option they have, they use law enforcement as a profit center. 
that becomes their choice. Right now, I'm not saying what they're doing is right. I'm saying I understand why, and I will change the environment so I don't have to anymore. Does that make sense, everybody? I can't make every legislator a good person. I can't do that. But what I can do is create an environment to where the good guys can be can do well, and the bad guys are frustrated. That I can do, absolutely. And that's one of the things, right? So now, listen, that ticket that was 50 bucks is now 200 bucks. Or that ticket now has a surcharge or court charge of 200, 300 bucks. That winds up happening. And there's purposeful in this. One, they know most of the time you won't pay. They know that. If you pay, they win. But if you don't pay, they cannot negotiate the dollars down. Oh, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. They can negotiate the dollars down. And if they can't do that, they can sell your debt. And that's what they're doing. They're selling debt. The problem is a collection agency won't buy 30 bucks of debt. But a collection agency will buy 300 bucks of debt that they can throw taxes and fees on, but then that taxes and fees on, they a $1,000 debt. They'll buy that debt. So they have to make sure that you're actually getting high fees so that they can buy a high debt. And they get about 30 cents on a dollar. So if, you're, if your uh, debt now is 300 bucks to the, to the county, the county sells that debt off, they get 100 bucks. That's what happens now. May I interject that last part about law enforcement? Yes. That I actually work law enforcement in uh, Orange County. Yep. Um, wouldn't that indeed make the job of law enforcement officers a little harder now that the criminals know, hey, there are higher penalties for this, so we're going to give people more problems? Because there are, there are I don't understand problems. that. Please, please say that again. Okay, so say if I pull somebody over and they get a ticket for late registration. Got it. Um, not a big fee. Okay. So they don't give me a problem with the officer that I'm with that pulls them over. Yes. They know it's a $300 fee now. They're now yelling they're, and screaming. Now they're going to cause That's correct. Problems. Yes. And there's already a lot of problems with how I, police are viewed. I already, uh, to be so, forward with you, I agree with you. And this is another thing. So there, there's, a, there's several parts of this. make police officers' jobs harder now that people that are breaking the law know that they're facing Yes, you're finding people not like law enforcement more, which is why, if you noticed, Cuomo is now very anti-law enforcement, yeah. right? Because if you notice, His Majesty does not like does not like his knights. His Majesty is does not like his knights at all. He's unhappy with his foot soldiers. He's unhappy with them, right? He's mad at them all the time. Why? Because he can be because of what you just said. Yeah. And the thing is, it's his will they're enforcing. The worst part is for most law enforcement, begrudgingly. We have put our law enforcement, anybody in law enforcement besides you who knows this, we put our law enforcement in a situation to where many of them are thinking, do I break my oath or do I feed my family? We put them in that situation. Shame on us for that. There's not one law enforcement officer, whether you're parole, corrections, uh, state trooper, local sheriff, whatever you are, police force, doesn't matter. No one goes to the academy going, I cannot wait till I can be a profit center. Woo! No one says that. No one's like, man, I can't wait. Let you start writing tickets and raising fees. No one says that. They join because they say, I want to do the right thing. I want to put bad guys away. I want to help. I want to serve. That's why they join. That's why they do it. So why don't we let them? You're totally right. I deal all the time with corrections officers all the time. I deal all the time with state troopers. And state troopers tell me this all the time. They say, Larry, I can't stand that I spend 90% of my time with 10% of the bad people. And I can't stand when I spend 10% of my time with the good people, it's always punishing them. I hate it. I want to be doing better things. And I'm like, I agree. I want you to also. Sometimes we can do also, we want to, is we can put actually a cap on how much money from fees uh, and fines that can go to any municipality. A certain amount of dollars. What does that mean? Once you go past X dollars, it no longer goes to the community. There's no financial incentive. What does that mean? Now law enforcement is punishing people because they deserve to be punished, not because my captain gave me a weird look because I haven't written any tickets today. Right, and that happens. If you're in law enforcement, you know that happens. My father was a corrections officer, and I knew a lot of cops. I, stood, I meet them all the time. They come to our events all the time, right? I don't want your captain giving you a look because you didn't do enough tickets. I want your captain giving you a look because you're not dealing with the bad guys. Then he should give you that look. Absolutely, deal with them. That's what I want. So you're totally correct, right? But I'll, I'll jump on corrections officers for a second. Um, we have some corrections officers here, anybody? In corrections here? Ah, someone, there we go. Corrections officers are, are personal for me in a way because my father was one in Rikers Island years ago. And right now His Majesty is very much anti, anti law enforcement in general, specifically anti-corrections. He hasn't given them uh, a, an actual contract in three years. So they're taking zeros. They are like not getting raises, nothing, getting punished. And one of the reasons why he won't give them a contract is they won't agree on, I'm not joking, on how he can punish them. That's part of the contract he's fighting on, on how he can punish them. 
I promise corrections officers, I will not, I don't care about that clause at all. Let it go, I'll give you a contract. Done, don't care about that. I'm not focusing on punishing the guys I need to fix the prison system. That doesn't make any sense. That's embarrassingly dumb. But here's the issue. He doesn't want to actually fix the prison system. So that's why he doesn't care. He actually doesn't want to fix it. But not just that. The average CO, the, uh, the uh, actual uh, life expectancy is 58 years old. 58. We should be ashamed of that. Every CO I've met, everyone knows exactly how much time they have to they're the out and done. Everyone. And everyone also knows someone who's committed suicide. That's where we are right now. That's an embarrassment. I will fix that. So when it comes to law enforcement, I will help law enforcement, absolutely. I went a little off track. I apologize for that, because you brought it up. But that does go into the taxation piece. But I'm not done with taxes. That's one step. Second, I want to get rid of school tax. That's an entire way. Oh, go ahead, sorry. I have another tax you don't get the vote on. Go ahead. School tax. I was just talking about, yes. If you own property in a district other than where you live, you don't get the vote on the school budget, but you got to pay the taxes. Yes, school tax is a big issue. Absolutely. I want to, and I want to deal with school tax for several reasons. One, because school tax is a way that, again, they will often pass taxation because when you say it's school tax, a lot of people vote yes emotionally. It's an emotional yes. I'm just being very vote with you. It is. And if you say it, you do it. How can I say no to the kids? It's school. I can't say no to the kids. It's an emotional yes. So they raise school taxes, which is just property taxes, right? In a certain way, or something like that. They do that in any way, right? So, they, so you people do it. You don't pay school tax. But exactly, that's my point, right? So that they're, they're actually raising, they're actually making a property that's by calling the schools tax, right? So they actually do that. And it's an emotional piece. And a lot of people vote yes. Or pressure people to vote yes who don't even, you don't have property? What, do you don't like the kids? What about the children? That's what happens. So you're right. I want to get rid of school tax. Our state, our state constitution actually says that the state has to pay for education ages, I'm sorry, grades 1 through 12. So my piece is the state should pay straight from the general fund. There should be no funding of schools locally at all. It's a whole different way of funding schools. A whole different way of funding schools completely. It gets rid of school tax period, which means all your taxes will all of a sudden, you'll have a surplus. You don't have to have that tax anymore. That will give you that will give you tax relief immediately. Does that make sense? You get immediate tax relief right away. Uh, the, the Republican I was saying, 30% cut in taxes. I don't know how he's gonna do that. That's magic, I hope you don't believe that. <laughs> I'm not joking, that's literally magic. Let me clear about this. I'll, I'll go a little bit off and come back to school tax. Let me clear on something. If you're a Democrat or Republican, let me ask you fast. Is anybody comfortable telling me if they are a registered Democrat? Awesome. Any registered Republicans? Awesome. Any registered people who are neither? Awesome. Anybody here who ha could have but has not voted in the last two election cycles? There we go. Every single event I go to, I get that. I ask that question. All, if you watch my go lives, I ask it all the time. I am the only candidate who gets Democrats, Republicans, Independents, and those who don't vote. My friends, this is a winnable race. I'm the only one who crosses over. How could I ask that live? You all could have been like, no, I'd have looked really stupid, <laughs> right? I would have looked really dumb, but I did it anyway. Why? Because it always happens. I'm sure it'll be one time I'll, I'll look dumb once, I'm sure, but it's fine. But every time it happens, so this is all happening. Why do I bring this up? If you're a Democrat, Democrats have run this state in a statewide level for 16 years. If they were gonna fix these problems, they would have fixed them, right? You got 16 years to fix something. I could fix anything in 16 years. I could fix the Middle East in 16 years. I'm kidding, anyway. My point is, I could fix anything in 16 years. It's a long time. You could fix them if you're in charge. Republicans have been watching this for 16 years. The current Republican nominee has been in government, in government for over 20 years. Where's his plan? Where's his plan? He thought last week, uh, 30%. You're gonna believe that? If that was real, why didn't he push that five years ago, six years ago, last year, anytime, six months ago, anytime, now he's like, oh, I'm in trouble. I'll throw 30% at you. You'll buy that. Please, guys, stop. If the Republicans actually cared, they would have already had a plan. They would tease me all the time and say, well, Larry, you've only been doing this for a year. Yeah, I was doing regular stuff before this. I was like raising my family and trying to grow my business like everybody else in the state's doing. I've been doing this one year. And in one year, 
I have a plan for almost everything and a movement. What do they have? Nothing. They're broken establishment party infrastructure, which is embarrassing. That's all they have. They talk about track record, I hear it all the time. We have a track record. You have a track record of a million New Yorkers leaving in eight years. That's a horrible track record. I'd be embarrassed of that. I wouldn't tell people, I would lie. <laughs> That's how bad that is. Or it's the weather. It's the That's weather. what it is. The weather. That's what it is. Exactly. The weather wasn't bad That's the reason. Years ago, the state had something going. Yeah, exactly. So yes. So it's embarrassingly bad. All right. So I know I'm going to track, but I want to make sure I get that piece in. I have plans. I will give you ideas. I just gave you ideas, right? And be very forward. If I'm wrong, is the best part. What if I'm wrong? My plans are not good enough. Help me fix them. I'm happy to be wrong. If you think I don't have the right answer, no. I was on a radio show, talking about my education pro program, and I'll cover that right now, talking about school tax. Talk about my education program, and I was talking about how I want to more localize it, give more power to the actual, the actual teachers, let teachers teach, and I have a real plan to make that happen. And the teacher called up and she said, Larry, you don't understand. The problem we have here with teaching is, I got kids coming into the schools, they're four and five years old, and know nothing. They don't know their numbers, they don't know their colors, they don't know, they don't know nothing. I said, wow, that's terrible. You're a teacher? Yes. I said, how can we fix that? What did I do? I asked the person who's right there what she thought was the right answer. If we want prison reform, maybe we should ask the COs how to fix it because they're right there. If I want education reform, maybe I should ask the teachers what they think. That's how business works, by the way. For those of you who don't know who I, what I do for a living, I do that. I help businesses. I've been in the office of the public company a couple times. When you go in, it's TV when they go, all right, I know everything, change everything. That's TV and movies. In reality, you're going and going, how do we fix this? Guys, help me. So you actually do. So I asked her, I said, what do you think you should do? She said, I think we should pay the parents. We should give them 50 or 100 bucks if their kids come in to pass the test. And I thought to myself, what a terrible idea. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Seriously, that's what I thought. Because if you, I did it, I was, it actually done live. It'll go live. It was on a radio station. So you can see my face live. <laughs> Literally, I was like, and they you know what I told her? Give it a shot. That's what I said. I thought to myself, terrible idea. But then I said, you know what? When I'm governor, give it a shot. That's what I told her. And this, again, you can see this is, this is, this is, this is a radio show. It's, it's on my Facebook page. I said, give it a shot. Why? Because I may be wrong. Because I'm not a teacher because I don't know best. Maybe she's right. She's there. And if it's local and only her money, which I'll cover that in a second, if it's only her money, not affecting anybody else, and that school district says, we should try this, let them try it. Because one of two things is true. They're right, it's an amazing program, all the kids do great, I'm wrong, awesome, I'm happily wrong. And every other school district that wants to can copy it. Happier kids means happier teachers means happier parents. Life is good. Or, I'm right, it's a bad idea. And they throw some money away, which is bad. But only they throw it away, their money, they chose to, and now with transparency, everyone else sees it and goes, oh yeah, we should do that. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I talk the talk, but I also want to walk the walk. When I say let teachers teach, let them teach. When I say localization, I mean localization. I thought bad idea, but I could be wrong. Let's teach you one time come to me at an event and say, Larry, get mad at me. Larry, how long you been in, in classrooms? How long have you been a teacher? And I said, oh, are you, are you telling me you've been around? Yes. I said, do you have an idea maybe to fix my, my, my plan? Well, I want to know how long you've been around. I said, look, if you're trying to measure my plan against perfection, it's going to fail. I'm not perfect. None of us are. I measure my plan against status quo. What's happening now? What's the alternative? Is the alternative for education for Democrats and Republicans? Done. That's the alternative. There is none. Raise taxes. Raise taxes. That's the alternative. Minus an actual plan, which I'll cover in a second. But there, I have a plan. So I told her, I was very forward. Again, this is, this is on video. I said, if you're here to give me help to fix it, I'm all ears. I am ready. Teach me. I, I'll bring you aboard my campaign. I'll put you in my cabinet. I don't care. Help me to fix this. I'm in. I want happy New Yorkers. You can have all the good. Well, name it after you. But if you're just here to say I'm wrong or poke holes, you can go away. 
and she went away. Yes, because if you just want to say, Larry, I don't like this or like that, great, help me to fix it. I just want to be, be, be mean. Go away. I don't need you. Go vote red or blue, and we can keep the same death spiral we have now. And we can keep dying. And you can be righteous and shake your fist. I was righteous as you're packing your U-Haul to go to North Carolina. You can righteously drive away. That's all you can do. I don't want to move. I don't want you to move. I want you to stay. We can repair this. So I talk the talk, and I'm trying to walk the walk too. Let me give, can I go to education now? Is that okay? Oh, go ahead. Before you fully go to go ahead. education, uh, back to unfunded mandates. Please. Um, how do you plan to reduce the number of people on Medicaid, yes. that don't on Medicaid, on EBT that don't belong in EBT? So hard, yes. Um, do you support drug testing those who are on public assistance and um, illegal aliens receiving benefits from power taxes? What do you plan to do? Yeah, you buy you throw a whole bunch at me. All right, education is going to go on the back burner, guys. Which is more important right now, education or this? This is. All right, so with this, education afterwards. All right, so the problem with these issues, again, to be forward, all these issues, to include taxation, to include education, have been 30 years in the making. So there is no single, I'll press the fix button. There are many things we must do to fix this. I'm going to give you many things, but remember something. Any one thing is not going to fix this. It's multiple faceted. Does that make sense? We must do many things to fix this. Secondly, this is a cultural issue. It's not just legal, it's also cultural, which means it will take years to break the culture. So let me touch this now. First, do I, do I support drug testing? No. Why? It doesn't make any sense. Here's the reason why. They've tried this before. It costs more to do the drug testing than we save by the people who are on it. We spend more money. It's righteous. I agree, it is, it is righteous, we'll show you, I get that completely. It doesn't work. It simply spends more money. We actually lose money doing it. We act, it would actually be better, a more effective way of doing it would be to provide two things. One, more opportunity for people, and two, more transparency in the system to show how bad it is. That's far more effective than drug testing. So I'm gonna spend my time, money, and energy, I gotta focus it on these two concepts. More, more opportunities, and on top of that, more transparency. Because there are a lot of people who have no idea, and I found out most of this by traveling, believe it or not, this last year, on how bad the fraud, waste, and abuse is in the system. I had no idea how bad it was. You're right, it's bad. But my point is, I didn't know, which means transparency is far more important. Most people believe, if you ask the average person, well, it's fine because Medicaid and Medicare is just helping people and no one's taking advantage of it. I'm serious. I'm not joking. I'm serious. You're, you're here because you care. There's millions of New Yorkers who aren't here. They think, they think it's fine. They think it's okay. So, the, so to ask your first question, no, and that's my reason behind it. It doesn't make any financial sense. And again, the data is that we've done it before. In city and state, it fails. It does not pay for itself at all. You lose money. And, and if you make one mistake, it's a lawsuit. You make one mistake, the state pays literally millions of dollars. Literally will settle for millions of dollars to someone who is on public assistance. Yes, the system does not work. It's a, it, it feels good, I know. It just doesn't work. It costs a 